Built out her shower pan before Fowl left for the weekend, so at least she has some uh, input in, in this design. We do have a diagram. We're gonna attach a list, so that's gonna be super helpful too. And then behind this, just to secure it a little bit more, we put a half inch piece that is completely flush for whenever we put our half inch wall right there. So we built this little shelf. On the bottom, we have a slight, ever so slight grade. We are starting to put our shower walls in. So here, we put in the pre-cut half-inch sheet for our stud and jigsawed where our cubbies were. Looking back now, it would have made much more sense to just attach the cubbies to the wall in the first place, but this is how we did it. So we're about to see where this pops out underneath. Oh boy, you're through. It's just mighty close. All right, that was, that was perfect. I'm back. Yeah, the goal is to get the framing of that into the ground. Yep, we're gonna... Make some templates with this piece of, what do they call this, panel board? It was like 20 bucks, but better than wasting a $50 sheets. We're going to cut this in half. We're going to make two different templates for the two different sides of the walls because they are a little bit different. Now we're about to try to cut our bow out. But on this side, we're going on the inside of the shower instead of on the outside. So as we were prepping to put in our framing for the shower, basically what we have now are all of our templates. Like this is going to be our ceiling with our puck light. You know, these are our walls over here. And as excited as we are to just go ahead and put them in, oh, uh, so it'd make more sense to go get the RFP, use yeah. these as templates now, and that way we'll have a snug fit and won't have to freehand it once the structure is already in. And we're back from Lowe's. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of how the day's going. We're making progress. If this was already up in the ceiling, this would be much more difficult. We are putting the light into our light hole yep. to see if it works. So this is like 64 millimeters, I think. Yeah, Darsha blows. What does today's progress look like? Oh my goodness. We have walls in our shower. Lots of Craig jigging went on today. All sorts of Craig jigging. Got a hole for our light. It's gonna be right under the light. Oh man. So today is our, at least our introductory to our plumbing video. Fallon is actually already put up our mixer connection. These two shark bite fittings are half inch to half inch male elbow adapters with a push to connect on one side. This is just a male half inch to half inch adapter with a push to connect. So this is a, a straight one. These are two elbow adapters. The point of this is just so that it, the, the pipe fitting doesn't leak. And then over here, we're going to need two half inch to half inch female elbow adapters with a push to connect fitting on either side. And then we're gonna use this blue monster tape to tape up this. Just the description below. So feel free to check that out. Uh, it is top of the market stuff. If you're gonna be living in this thing, it's only probably 100 or 200 bucks more. We have some of our shark bite elbows, shark bite T fittings. These are all half inch because our pecs is half inch. We've got some ball valves. We've got our pump. We've got a strainer. We actually had to order a swivel nut because we're getting an accumulator that's coming in the mail. This is going to be our half inch pecs. We're going to be getting some more of this. This is for making uh, whenever you cut your, your pecs with your pipe cutters. We got a 30 gallon tank, hot water heater. This is actually a four gallon. And we actually have a little push to connect hose that we're gonna have on the back wall out here too. It's gonna be coming out, so if Og Dog up there ever gets dirty and we wanna give her a rinse, we'll be able to do that right here. Kind of where we're at right now on our shower wall, we put up some, some two by twos to add some rigidity in the front side, get an idea of where our pipes will be running, our diagram below to let us know what's going on as we do it. And then lastly, this is actually where we decided to put our shower arm. But again, we will have all the items that we use in the description you know, really how all that's gonna work out and play play a part here. Just drawing a diagram previous to just hopping in and winging it is gonna save you hours. Everybody's system's a little different, but hopefully this helps. So after deliberating about where to put our water tank and our hot water heater, came up with a spot because we had to fit it for our pump. So we came out with these five inch studs. That way our water tank can sit flush against it. Bow's putting some DHB tape on there. Just some extra cushioning. <laughs> Alrighty, so this afternoon we received our FRP adhesive. Yes! I'm gonna go ahead and caulk the inside corners of the shower first. We're going to try to get up the, I guess we could try to get up the pre-cut pieces of FRP. So We've got about half of it cut right now. Hopefully this is going to match what 
our cubbies look like. Let's see. Some special cuts. Looks like we're about an inch over. Plum a day. Ooh. I'm very excited. Okay, so we just got up our our 12 volt pump for our shower and our sink. It can be mounted in any way, but if you're gonna do it vertically, you should put it with the head down so that if it leaks for any reason, it doesn't leak into the motor. We made a little hole with a grommet and some silicone in there for these wires to come through so we can wire it up. We attached the strainer. We did make sure to put that cap that was right on this orange thing. It was this guy. Um, to put it on the other side of the strainer so we didn't get any stuff in it until we were ready to attach everything together. Okay, so we're putting on this straight adapter swivel nut right now. Thank you, Zach, for finding the name for that for me. We are not going to be putting any of the pipe tape on these because apparently if it's on near the pump, it can pull the tape into the pump and we don't want that. So here's our first push to connect connection. We measured it in our little PEX thing here. Marked it with a Milwaukee marker, and we're gonna push it in right to the line. Oh, that wow, was a little harder than I expected. Hmm. Um, and we just kept on measuring to see where exactly it would fall. This acts as a replica or like an example fitting or mouth for your shark bite. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark this. Unfortunately, because our shower is so small, we had to stick our shower head right in the in the corner there. Um, otherwise, it would have been right under our light. Okay. Oh, we have to use a three fourths inch paddle bit because um, we didn't have a hole saw small enough. Okay, and our hole is done. Looks like we're making a birdhouse. Here we are assembling our PEX tubing and shark bite fittings that run to our shower, sink, and outside hose. Again, check out the diagram to connect the dots here. All items will be linked below, and if you do happen to purchase anything using our links, thank you, as this helps support our channel. All right, now back to the video. We're back at it! And don't quite know what we're going to do today. That's not true. Let's we know that. what we're going to do. We're, we're going to potentially put in that that outlet. For a hot water heater. Here we go. Wait, right, was that the right one? Only going to be plugging our hot water heater into it, which is 12 amp. Oh, and it says that you need to plug it into a 125 250 so it lets out a maximum of 15 amps and a maximum of 125 volts we also chose the gcfi outlet which is this basically you have this option the reset and test option here um, because it just adds an extra measure of safety i'm reading an article right now that says that you should pre-tighten the screws so that you have a little bit of the screw coming through i guess it just helps it to to tighten a little easier those tabs actually what they're going to do is um they're going to flip up on either side and we're going to tighten in these screws and these screws and those tabs are going to hold this box in place then we're going to take our wire here ouch we're going to pull it through one of these holes you should have about six inches of wire coming out of your box here so it would be pretty hard to put the rest of that in if it weren't about that length this is for 12 2 notice that it has space for a ground in the middle you line them up right on your romex and you pinch down i'm not going to do it again because i don't want to strip anymore i'm going to go ahead and attach these wires appropriately onto our outlet there are these little cubbies here and you literally stick the wire into the cubby and then you just tighten down looking at the back of the outlet there are some lines and it says load or line on here your white wires will go on the silver side and your hot wires will go on like the goldy brassy side um, and your ground wire is going to go on the green screw which is on the bottom so here's my romex i might end up pulling that back into the wall a little bit we'll see um and then i just tighten down these two screws here and now what i'm gonna do is put on the face plate and it'll look nice and clean all right so we were just testing to see where our water tank is actually going to fit our red piece right here for our pecs is going to become a drain hole so that's going to look like that and then additionally, we needed to take into account our T that's gonna run across the floorboard and up to our sink. Woohoo! Might be able to get our water tank in today. This is half inch bushing that we got with our SureFlow silencing kit, by the way, and it has the Blue Monster pipe tape on it. The pump has been wired together. Foul installed our first outlet. Yeah! Look, look at that beautiful thing. Foul too. And then we're about to slide our water tank over now. We have these as basically a brace uh, to keep it in place. We're gonna have the outside of our box there. I mean, we have our pipe tape across the front, braces there. We're gonna have a wall for our dinette there coming over the top. By the way, if you're ever looking for this stuff on Amazon, it's 
called? The pipe hanger tape? We'll link in the description. We're gonna work on filling our one and a half inch threads, but we have an adapter, a bushing to a half inch uh, male and male sided to basically this ball valve. And what we're gonna be using to secure that is our primer and our PVC cement. On the threading pieces, we have this blue monster, which you've already seen in Fallon use quite a few times. Pops told me to basically sand uh, where the female and the male part, uh, or where the male goes into the female end, just so the cement can have something to grab onto. It'll be a little bit more coarse there. Um, on the first one, within about five minutes of putting on your primer, which you should do anywhere from 20 to 30 spins, probably don't put as much as I did on my first one, so you don't have a stain like that. Within five minutes of putting the primer on there, you need to put on PVC fitting into the female end. So I'm going to be repriming because it has been longer than five minutes. So here we go. The top right fitting that we are tightening to our tank will be for our fill port. And the bottom left is for winterizing the van. This is in the event that we were to ever fill our tank with bad water and needed to dump it. Or if we were ever in too cold of climates where our tank or our pipes could potentially freeze. Hey everybody. So today I am working on some FRP stuff. I got in these side pieces here and on the other side and on the other side. Sitting and waiting to dry. FRP is a big old pain in the ass. Um, and so well, I've had to wedge a whole bunch of things in here just so these will stay on the wall. Um, they're not really super excited about sticking there. And then I went ahead and I started caulking, which has been fun. Um, we've got some, or we had some really big spots that were missing. Down here, I'm gonna have to caulk again. I'll probably have to caulk again everywhere. We're gonna put some FRP around these sides here. Um, when we built the shower, we didn't really take into account that this like funny wood thing. So we're gonna put some FRP over that too. So it's waterproof, but I do have to cut off some pieces. We have already drilled a pilot hole into the shower pan. It's been like that for months now. And that was just where we, we figured out where we wanted to put our our hole in the first place. We just drilled through both the shower pan and, and the floor. All right, so after a lot of sanding and trying to multi-tool and stuff around this edge, the shower pan sits in here a little bit better. Not a lot better, but a little bit better. It's not caught on any corners. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and tape up this circular hole here um, so that when we go ahead and actually make the hole, it won't crack the shower pan because obviously cracking the shower pan would be really, really bad. So we're going to go ahead and... All right, and there's the hole. I filed down the, like, the really sharp edges of the bottom there. I got some rust-oleum primer slash enamel and I sprayed that up in there just to protect from rust. There's only one way that the shower pan fits in. So here's my drain. Already took off this bottom ring and also the little plastic gasket that goes in that. So those are all already. So we're gonna take off this nut here. Here is a paper little protective ring for our rubber gasket here so that the metal doesn't go into the rubber. So what we're gonna be doing is taking our Flex Seal rubber. See if I can get out this. Oh, there we go, nice. And we're just gonna do a little bead around the edge. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and smooth this bad boy out just around the edge here. I should have worn gloves like any other normal prepared person, but that's fine. Okay, here it is, we're going into so that is in and it is sitting through the bottom hello again world the paper gasket which is meant to protect this rubber gasket and then we've got a nut so first things first we're gonna slide on this rubber gasket sliding on the rubber gasket the paper gasket goes on next the red this guy this is our nut it's called a nut so we have our tailpipes cut here um, and then this is the plastic gasket and then this is just the outside nut that came with the drain. Um, I've tightened this nut down as much as I can at this point. We've got, again, that paper piece there um, to make sure that our rubber doesn't wear out too quick. And then we have that rubber gasket. So this doesn't actually go on nice with our little plastic bit here. So we're saying goodbye to the plastic bit and we are going to line our hole with a rubbery caulk. It's like the flex seal caulk. So our whole hole is gonna be flux sealed in and hopefully we will not get any leaks into our van. So we're not doing a regular shower door on our van like a Nautilus or anything like that. We're just gonna do a curtain at the moment. So what I'm doing is I'm putting magnets on the inside of the shower 
uh, floor before I even put it into the van. And I'm going to, um, I did this with VHB tape, which is actually what we used for the top of the bin for the solar panels as well. Um, so it is apparently very, very strong tape. Anyway, and then I am going to put magnets in the shower curtain and then hopefully the shower curtain will stay nice and stuck. So we just put our adhesive on with the caulk gun. She's about to stick the little pipe through. Oh, okay. And... Yeah? Yeah. That's in there? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Alrighty. So now we have our five long pieces cut. And me. With our bottom part basically being comprised of vertical beams with an opening here. We haven't quite worked on this part yet. How you feeling? Good. All right. And then the view from the outside. Basically, it's our water system, storage, and these will be our bench bed lids. We are going to build basically the piece that will be covering up this PEX for our shower. This is our panel board that we used actually to make the wall for the shower. So thankfully we still have that and basically modify until we can cut our other piece out. All right, we are seeing if the second iteration of our wall fits and all of this space where you can still see like plywood and stuff, we're gonna put some extra shiplap over there. Um, how does it feel? It looks good. I mean, all in all, looks pretty good. I think it's great. We'll yeah. cover it up with some studding and yeah, and trim. And so now we're just going to cut the bottom line to make our hatch. Basically, we're going to put in a hinge so that that can act like a door in case anything ever happens to our water supply system or rather our pecs and our shark bite fittings. We have an access point to that. Yes. This one has been a long time coming, and we'll wood putty all this, put some paint over it. You want to be able to tell. This stuff is really awesome compared to like the DAP plastic wood. I hate that stuff. This is the, the last wall that we need to put in. So um, that's huge. Um, we are going to just finish up the caulking in the shower. Um, soon we are going to be putting up our shower curtain um, and our shower rod and then our shower will be done. Woo! You don't want to just talk to me this time? This could be a fun video to have. And be like, oh my God, my girlfriend is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Really. You are cute though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you're going to get to see our nice curtain in a second. We finally have all of our attachments. We're oh. just going to put a bucket on That's the end of this idea. and then check that water line, see if it works. Check all the other lines, see if they work. Great. Step one, attach the winky, the winky <laughs> or the funnel <laughs> to make this end easier to adapt and go into our fill port. I prefer to call it the winky. I just think it's funnier. So step two, before filling the water, you're making sure all valves that need to be turned off or on are in fact turned off or on. This, now that I have it up right, tells us where all of our ball valves are. So we're gonna look at that, make sure we're good. All right, so all valves are turned off. These are our, basically our end valves right here. It's not necessarily a ball valve, but there is an opening on the backs of backs those. So like our mixer, which is back here, opens whenever we adjust this. So that's really all we have to do from here. We're gonna go fill it up. We're gonna check all of our fittings. So things like down in there, if you can see, we've got an elbow. Basically we're looking for our faucets to work and there being no leaks. We might need to get a smaller adapter. It's a pretty big winky. Step one, we have our water. Step two is going to turn on the pump. All right, so she's gonna be checking all of these fittings. See those shark bites down there? The water moving. We got water moving. We're gonna be checking to make sure none of these burst off. I'm gonna open this. They are a shark bite, so they should be good. Make sure nothing back here is leaking. Back here is leaking? No, I said, I'm making sure nothing is. So you can hear the pump. I can hear and, water. And it can definitely feel the pressure being pushed. Hey, will you turn it off? Well, none of these have bursted, so that's good. Our winterizing part is not filled. There's no leaks here, so that's good. Now we're gonna go try. Our shower. Come on over, friends. I don't know how much pressure we accumulated, so we'll see if anything happens. <laughs> okay, something's happening. This is our, like, our stop-start thing. 
Uh -huh. Okay, so I'm gonna turn on the pump again. Okay. Turn on the thing. Let's see. Come on. You gotta hit the button. Oh, oh, oh! It's coming oh out. Oh my god! It's definitely coming out. <laughs> All right. So hopefully that quarter of our water tank reached the pipes over here. <laughs> Check that out. Is the, is the drain open? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. That's coming out. All right, can you turn it off? Yep. All right, let's do it. Round two. Nice. That's yeah. exactly what we're hoping for. There it is. Note to us we will not be showering on any major hill. <laughs> so now we're trying our spray, our outside sprayer for when Augie gets dirty and. Now we're just trying to spray some things off. First, we need to make sure that this ball valve is on. So we're gonna spray this bad boy. Nice! Oh yeah, and then you can hear the pump go back on once you use the sprayer. Okay. So take two on our... Beautiful, and I can hear our pump going again. Nice, that's really great. Look at that, that thing really shoots. Great water pressure. Look at that. Woo. Nice. Very, very, very cool. I mean, this would be a pretty serious shower right here. Yeah, I mean, really quick. Oh! oh, oh. <laughs> this is only on me. Uh. <laughs> Alright, can you put this back on? <laughs> oh my gosh! The whole freaking van! <laughs> Oh, babe, that's what we had to do. That was our big thing. Yeah. Nice. Nice, YouTube. Nice. <laughs>